Think back to a time you've been in a doctor's office or a hospital waiting room. Uncomfortable chairs, paperwork to be filled out, people trying to avoid awkward eye contact with one another. Your mind is racing. For those with intellectual disabilities like autism, that experience is more than unpleasant. It's triggering and it's anxiety-inducing. Students at Jefferson have made it their mission to change that, and it all started with a giant hole in the ground in Center City, Philadelphia. At the corner of 11th and Chestnut Streets, the visionary project known as Jefferson's state-of-the-art specialty care pavilion will become the largest capital investment in the enterprise's nearly 200-year history. The project will total $768 million at its completion. The 19-story medical building will provide a seamless outpatient experience and aims to shatter previous visions you had of medical offices. The building won't be ready for patient care until 2026, but the planning process has already provided tangible evidence of the great things that happen when Thomas Jefferson University's Nexus Learning concept takes hold. I'm Brian Hickey, a member of the university's communications team. For this inaugural episode of the university's Nexus podcast, I spent time embedded with teams from our Canbar College of Design, Engineering, and Commerce and Jefferson Center for Autism and Neurodiversity, who worked together to make outpatient care more inclusive of neurodiverse populations. While most students and faculty members spent their summer breaks away from our campuses, a quartet of industrial design undergrads toiled in a Hayward Hall basement studio with an eye toward a future that accommodates patients on the spectrum and those who suffer from anxiety. They aimed to conceptualize, research, and fabricate a chair that could offer comfort for neurodiverse and other anxious patients inside what will be Jefferson's specialty care pavilion. Meet Rob Melville, an adjunct professor within the Canbar College. I came to Jefferson as an adjunct professor about three years ago, really by accident. Rob was educated in his native United Kingdom as a furniture designer, and he moved to the U.S. from London, England nearly 15 years ago. His path to the university is a unique one. I was working at a high school where I ran an industrial design program. I brought a student here one day to see the, the program, hoping she could actually come and study here and ended up being hired myself as the furniture design instructor. Under the guidance of Professor Melville, students Nick Galley, Elijah Jones, Rachel Hanna, and Isaac Savanese spent seven weeks within what's become termed as the Neurodiverse Furniture Project. Their effort included a meeting with students in the class, folks from Jeff Kahn, Vice President of Ambulatory Program Development Pam Ward, and members from the architecture firms involved in the project. They were shown early concepts that could ultimately become a staple of the pavilion once it opens. They mapped out plans that will push this effort forward from a summer pursuit into a multi-year effort. Let's take a look back at what they accomplished before the fall semester started and how they hope to push this forward into the future. It all started in 2019 with a phone call to the industrial design department from Dr. Wendy Ross, the director of Jeff Can. She had an idea for how they could collaborate. One of the great things about Jefferson is that there's so much amazing and passionate talent. It is a place that has architecture, industrial design, and fashion, so that we can work on the environment from the person outwards. That ultimately led to a meeting which jump-started an unexpected educational journey for Professor Melville and his students. I then got to meet her and and really find out more about the neurodiverse community and how their needs at, at the present time are not really being addressed in healthcare in many ways, on many levels. The project started with a, a conversation, a dialogue between us about how seating could better address the needs of that community. While this project involves furniture, the inspiration behind it mirrors much of Dr. Ross's philosophy at Jeff Cam. It's a natural fit for the center, which was created in 2018 to help address the needs of patients on the spectrum. A developmental and behavioral pediatrician by training, Dr. Ross's primary focus is integrating medical, educational, and therapeutic plans for young patients. She says the project speaks to the center's mission of being a lifespan program for those who often feel othered. In her words, it's about creating a sense of belonging across our community which fuels the mindset behind the Neurodiverse Chair Project. 
When we think about the Americans with Disabilities Act, there are guidelines for physical disabilities. You would not put somebody in a wheelchair in a community without ramps. Frequently, for the neurodiverse population, there are no similar accommodations. One of our major goals is to change culture by showing that anything is possible. Jefferson is uniquely equipped to show that anything is possible because of its wide-ranging cadre of expertise. While many wouldn't think a team of aspiring industrial designers could work with experts in neurodiversity, that is exactly what this group set out to do. We are working on a chair that will be designed for those with neurodiversity, those who have issues with being overwhelmed in sensory environments. It will benefit anyone who needs a moment of respite in a crowded, overwhelming, or stressful space. Wanting to show that anything is possible, the team embarked on its mission in Hayward Hall's Design Technology Lab back in mid-July 2021. It's an unassuming room that would soon see conceptual sketches covering its white walls. Professor Melville set out to create a workplace-like environment for the project, which was different than regular coursework, both on a micro sense to industrial design majors and in a macro sense to the mission of the university and enterprise as a whole. The team of students I'm working with are from different levels of the industrial design program, and they've worked very well in a professional environment, which is, is what we tried to create this summer, rather than just a regular educational class environment. A typical day in the studio could involve the students working in the shop, prototyping, working with materials, experimenting, working with mechanisms. It could involve them in the studio space, drawing, cutting cardboard, making um, mock-ups. It could involve a field trip to an upholstery company or to a big contract furniture company nearby where we went to see existing products uh, in the marketplace. Junior Nick Galley hails from Joppa, Maryland. He breaks down specifics on what they set out to accomplish during the seven-week process. The first week, we began initial research. The second week, we began more ideation. In the third week, we were looking at more sketch models and miniature prototypes. And then in the fourth week, we started developing bigger models and things you could actually sit in and then feel, just so then we could get the sense of enclosure to how this would feel for a neurodiverse person. It was designed to be, in Professor Melville's words, a challenging and interesting project for everyone involved for the benefit of a challenge faced by a growing demographic. The goal of the effort, which would ultimately become a special topics course melding design expertise with medical research, was to create a prototype chair for testing with end users and ideally partner with an outside vendor for production. Suffice it to say, it expanded well beyond their initial parameters. One of the things that we've been made aware of is really the scope and size of this project. It was initially um, scheduled for seven weeks. At the end of those seven weeks, we achieved a testable prototype. As Professor Melville mentioned, the students came into the effort with varying levels of background and expertise. Galley was a rising junior. Isaac Savanese and Rachel Hanna were rising seniors. Elijah Jones, the youngest of the group, was a rising sophomore. Not only did they get real hands-on professional level experience, but their horizons were also broadened. Isaac Savanese hails from Ridley Park, Delaware County. Isaac says he was always drawn to making things, so the industrial design path became a natural fit. He found his way into Professor Melville's furniture classes during his junior year at the university. As a child, me and my dad would make props together for movies and TV shows and stuff. But as I got older, I became really interested in the opportunity to make things that could have an impact on people's lives. I originally found Jefferson through architecture. For my first year here, I did architecture, and it wasn't until I met some of the other industrial design students that I switched over programs in sophomore year. Industrial design was appealing to me because it's catered to all of the things that I really enjoyed to do, which was art and making things. It also created that opportunity to improve upon things, invent new things, and actually have an impact on people's lives or help to improve their lives in some way. I've always been really interested in furniture, and based on some of the design work we've been doing in our main design class, I was doing a lot of adaptive design and healthcare-related projects as well. This was really the marriage between those two things, which I've been really interested in. His teammate, Rachel Hanna, also grew up with a passion for creating things and artistry. 
Originally from Seattle, Washington, she's lived in the area for about 10 years now. I grew up really being very three-dimensional. I like to build things. I like to craft and teach myself how to make things. But I was also very artistic. I did a lot of drawing and painting as a kid. That passion, mindset, and real-world considerations led Rachel to pursue industrial design at Jefferson. I, I couldn't be a starving artist. So for me, it was, how do I make this something that I can use and make a living off of, but also do something that I feel like is making a difference? I love that industrial design is just so broad. There's, you know, so many different places to learn new things, and I feel like I'm constantly learning. So I love that part about it as well. I'm learning new materials and new ways of making things. From a personal perspective, the project resonated with Rachel even going beyond the target audience. It's thinking about not just the typical everyday person, but really considering other people that don't fit into specific molds, whether it be bariatric or elderly, or people that, say for example, are nursing and need privacy. There's so many people that this benefits, focusing on the needs that other people may have compared to just the average person going in for a doctor's visit. Everyone benefits from it. That's really, you know, important to think about. Even as someone that has anxiety, if I have a bad experience or a bad doctor visit and I get bad news, I might not want to be in public. I might want privacy. So it's thinking about how we're all very connected and, you know, embracing the fact that we all have shared experiences and we might need a service like privacy or comfort in a specific area. Elijah Jones chose Jefferson at the suggestion of Professor Melville who actually taught him at the Charter High School for Architecture and Design in Center City. Originally from Southwest Philadelphia, he also appreciates how ideas can transform into 3D form in industrial art. Being involved in the Neurodiverse Chair Project took on a different sort of personal importance for him. He came into it hoping to garner more insights into the life of a younger relative. I became interested in it because one of my younger cousins is on the spectrum. Seeing how he maneuvers through life and seeing how his brain works in different settings, I think this chair would help not only him, but a lot of people that's going through the same things. We began researching different things about the neurodiverse community, learning about where the chair is gonna be placed in the 11 to one Chestnut building. Hopefully it'll be an impactful thing to people on that spectrum. Though it's years away from reality, Elijah already has hopes for the outcome of work, both completed and work yet to be done. As the project develops, I would like to see how it will impact the lives of people. Hopefully it makes a difference. From Nick Galley's perspective, the project meshed with what drew him to Jefferson's industrial design program in the first place. On a tangible level, their creation very well may impact the lives of many users beyond those they had in mind during the seven-week project. When I looked at the industrial design major, I thought it was really fascinating and interesting just because it's a lot more hands-on work. With that, you get to build products for users, these products would then have beneficial reasons for the user, which I thought was really interesting. This chair is going to be constructed to benefit the neurodiverse community, and it's going to benefit some sort of sensory aspects to people that are on the spectrum or who are also neurodiverse. We also need to design it to make it universal for all users, so then everybody can benefit from this chair actually being in the hospital. This chair could honestly be incorporated into education, public areas, and just other different areas in general. Those lines of thinking meshed well with Dr. Ross's philosophies. What she saw by the end of the seventh week was not only a concept for a chair, but a team of industrial design students and a professor learning more about Jeff Kahn's patients and their mission. One of the most powerful things that happened in Rob's course was not just the work that happened on the chair, but the development that we saw happening in the students themselves. Having this course and meeting people that were different than themselves, that maybe had different needs in their industrial design products, was super helpful in how they will go forward in designing other products in the future. We saw during the course that they were able to change their patterns of language in an appropriate and not condescending way in order to elicit the best possible feedback from the participants with a great deal of respect. Those skills of being flexible in how you interact with people and also to take into consideration a broader population in your designs will serve them well in the future. I was super excited about this course because it felt 
that it was a lot of people coming together and it wasn't just that the students were learning. Rob expressed that he had learned some things that he did not know before. Our team learned a lot about the design process and what goes into that, which will inform collaborations in the future. To that end, Dr. Ross views this effort through the lens of diversity, both of the chair's potential users and the university's areas of expertise. It's really critical that when we think about diversity, inclusion, and equity, that we consider the population affected by disabilities. That goes not just for people with obvious disabilities, but people who may be struggling with problem-solving, communications, and sensory issues. Unfortunately, those with situations that might be intellectual disability, autism, mental health struggles, neurological issues, if they are seen, their needs are sort of seen as second class or not as important. It's as if their lives are not as valuable as everyone else's. Frequently, when we think about people with physical or invisible disabilities, there's sort of an afterthought, and there's a sense that the quality of their lives is not as good as anyone else's, or that they're not happy. Harkening back to Jeff Kahn's mission, Dr. Ross thinks it would be great on a societal level if everyone took the time to step back and commit themselves to the mantra that everybody belongs. We need to improve access and we need to improve opportunity. When we increase opportunity for one group, frequently we improve opportunity for all of us. As with every other project, we talk to our people first and we find out from the outset what works for them, what doesn't work for them. And we include them in our process. In fact, the team's work mirrored Jeff Kahn's approach in many ways, according to Dr. Ross. Focus groups came and saw our seating. They gave their direct feedback and they are involved every step of the way. They are our teachers as well as the people that we are serving. We get the perspectives of the people that we serve and from people across our healthcare centers and our university of all different backgrounds. We educate not just the people affected, but the community at large. And that's sort of our ramp. And it's one of understanding, knowledge, skills, and sensitivity. She noted several aspects of the PEOPLE acronym that guides their approach. PEOPLE is shorthand for perspective, education, outcome, programs or process, lessons learned, and environment. Having a program or an experience that we can measure is vitally important to us. We don't just want to create a chair or a room or an outfit. We really want to shift culture because everybody matters and everybody should be able to have access to community experiences, health care, and employment. The exciting thing about this effort is how it could blossom into some 100 chairs throughout the specialty care pavilion while offering a unique educational opportunity for the students involved. Professor Melville noted that the students had a chance to participate in a real-world design project, which, unlike regular semester classes, could take a project through to being a producible result every time. The ultimate goal of the project is really to help the, the neurodiverse in a number of ways. One of the most important ways it's going to help them is it's not going to stigmatize them. Some of the research we're doing into healthcare in particular is that we all, on some level, become neurodiverse under stress. And obviously, in a healthcare environment, a lot of people are stressed. The research we are doing will benefit everybody, but I think it, it, it will specifically benefit the neurodiverse community, and that's really our aim. It's a fortuitous result that the effort has already extended beyond its initial schedule. For Isaac Savanese, that means they can really have a positive impact on the lives of others. It looks like this project may potentially spread out into something longer than we originally imagined. The ultimate goal is, of course, to first cater to the needs of the neurodiverse community, and primarily that will be done in this new healthcare pavilion. This project has been really great, the opportunity to work on a project that will hopefully see the light of day at some point getting to work with all the uh, restrictions and guidelines that uh, come with designing furniture in a healthcare environment has been really eye-opening. 
That aligns with what Rachel Hanna learned throughout the process in which she took on a leadership role. I'm really interested in this project because I have previous experience with healthcare and design. I did lighting design and I'm actually continuing this project next semester with an art installation piece that's going to be put into this building as well. I'm kind of in different aspects of it, which is really exciting. It's an amazing opportunity. How could a chair cater to this community, but also how could art or how could lighting cater to this community? It's a really amazing opportunity. When Rob first came to me, he knew that he needed seniors that could lead the team that had expertise in ideation and concept work. Love my team, they're very technical and it's a good thing, but um, thinking about the user more in a big picture way, what is their experience? and are we solving their needs and does it blend in with other furniture not wanting to other or make the neurodiverse user feel separated from the rest of the community. For Professor Melville, it's a level of cooperation and collaboration that has boundless potential. One of the really interesting things about the, the model that Jefferson is developing of education and collaboration is that the healthcare side of things and the design side of things and engineering side of things really do complement each other very well. Quite a unique thing that we have here. We're really bringing together professionals from both the healthcare side of things at Jefferson and the design engineering side of things to really solve problems that require teamwork and collaboration. It's certainly not something I've experienced before as an educator and I think it's an exciting opportunity which definitely should be built in the future. Dr. Ross offered some hints on where this project would go in the immediate future, notably that a second course started in January. Not only will Jeff Can be looking at the seating, but an MPH student will code the visual reactions of focus group members to gauge the reactions of those who are less verbal. She also said that the unexpected kismet between the industrial design and healthcare mindsets is an amazingly unique thing for Jefferson. We are again super excited to be able to work with Cabe and Cambar to help create something really unique and special, not just for the people that we serve, but for all of us. At Jefferson, we think that everyone matters and everyone belongs. Everyone belongs in our healthcare center. Everyone belongs in a seat at the table. And we're going to work on designing that scene. On February 1st, a topping off ceremony was held on the site of the specialty care pavilion. Richard Haverstick Jr., the interim president of Thomas Jefferson University and the interim CEO of Jefferson Health, put into context what this project means. Our topping off ceremony is about more than the completion of an important stage in a construction project. It's more than the celebration of the building. It's the celebration of our community, the community Jefferson cares for, the community that cares for us in so many ways. To learn more about this and other Jefferson stories, visit jefferson.edu backslash the nexus. Today's interviews were conducted by Brian Hickey with production support from Dan Bernstein. Thanks for listening. <laughs>